Four climate scientists at different stages in their lives and careers reveal the burden of knowing what predicted climate changes will bring. I think for years I was really living in two different worlds. I was the scientist at work who was just objectively looking at numbers and, um, and then over years starting to be more and more worried about my own life, but I separated it completely from my private life. I think that was a little bit of a self-protection. Um, that doesn't really work that well anymore. In the past few years, I carry this knowledge with me wherever I am. Oh, that, that looks beautiful, way, Kenan. But, but otherwise, that looks amazing. Look at this. My name is Katrin Meissner. I'm the director of the Climate Change Research Center at the University of New South Wales. I've been working in this field for the last 20 years and I've been mapping lots of concerning trends in that time. Many people do not really understand how big a threat climate change is to humanity. The changes that we see right now are much faster than anything we have seen in the climate history. And that concerns me because it means that ecosystems might not be able to adapt. It's going to be dramatic. It's going to be very dramatic. I think one day in the last heat wave, I measured 45 degrees outside in the shade on our front patio and it was 39 on the inside. I was sleeping with wet towels on my legs to keep cool. So I'm Sarah Perkins Kirkpatrick and I'm a research fellow at the University of New South Wales. And what I look at is heat waves. So how they've changed, why they've changed, uh, what their changes will be in the future, how we measure them and the role of climate change behind the heat waves. I had conversation with my husband as these heat waves were occurring in the summer, going, are we doing the right thing? Is it right to bring kids into this world? with me knowing how bad it's going to be. There is so much wrong with climate change and there's so many impacts that we're already locked into that I can't change, that no one can really change. It's gonna be bad. And it's almost, why would you inflict that on someone? Okay, so that's where it's going to go. My name is Justin Ugis. I'm doing a PhD at the University of Melbourne, just looking at urban microclimate as it is now and looking at how we can improve it into the future. We need to be able to plan our cities better, we need to be able to design them better. Keeping in mind what's coming, keeping in mind these temperatures that are getting into the 50s in Melbourne and often I can't believe that I'm saying that but the computer models or the, the research is telling us this is what's coming. Yeah, it's, it's tragic. Whenever I talk to my wife about heat waves, she gets scared of them. And unfortunately, I can't really give her any good news. Yeah, I've been married for about five years. Yes, we want children. But we're quite concerned about it, even scared of it. Our parents both want us to have children and there's a lot of joy that comes with having children. But at the same time, knowing what's coming with climate change, we've actually just been putting it off. You can say you don't believe in gravity, but the apple's still going to hit you on the head. You can say you don't believe in climate change, but it's not going to stop it getting hotter. I think Australia is the most vulnerable, developed country in the world to climate change. Uh, my name's uh, Professor David Griggs. Uh, I work at the Monash Sustainable Development Institute at Monash University. My background is as a climate scientist and atmospheric physicist. Um, in the past, I've been Head of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, Science Working Group Secretariat. I've been Director of the Hadley Centre for Climate Change, which is the UK Government Research Centre into Climate Change. Uh, and I've been the Vice Chair of the World Climate Research Programme. I think we're heading to a future with a considerably greater warming than two degrees. And when the world doesn't do something about it, that brings a whole range of emotions into play. I mean, uh, I, depression is what is, is clearly something, you know, you, you get days when you are down because you just, you know, the, what you know um, and what you can see coming is not good. For people living in Australia, it means that a lot of people will suffer and a lot of people will die. The problem is nobody's death certificate will say this person died of climate change. They will say they died of heat stress or cardiac arrest or they died of, in a bushfire. Climate scientists are under a lot of scrutiny. 
Uh, we get ridiculed a lot by certain people for being alarmists, by going too much into detail. Where in actual fact we're actually probably reservists and are very conservative in our estimates and make sure we're so um, sure of the numbers before we actually get them out there. I don't like to scare people, but the future's not looking very good. Well, I'm fortunate in that I live in Melbourne at the moment, and Melbourne is one of the more climate adapted cities um, in Australia. Uh, but if I was living in you know, Darwin or Brisbane, I would be seriously thinking about moving. One of the important things about climate change, when you think of it in the context of sustainable development... Among climate scientists, the conversation is turning to their personal plans. We'll talk about where we're planning to retire to or where we're planning to move to and how we're planning to you know, safeguard our families from in the future. And the consensus seems to be Tasmania. Tassie, because it's the furthest south, it's the coolest. We have thrown up the idea and the, you know, the potentially if the opportunities came up moving to somewhere like Canberra. So it's a city, it's got good infrastructure, got good employment opportunities. Yes, it gets warm there and yes, it's a dry climate, but the temperature doesn't get as hot as Sydney. Their nighttime temperatures are a lot cooler. And you can cope with extreme heat much better if you've got cooler nighttime temperatures to sleep. For me and my wife anyway, maybe forced to move further south and I'm sure that there's a lot of other people that are probably thinking the same thing. My grandpa decided to move down to the coolest part of Australia. He's living on a boat south of Hobart and he's trying to drag me down to Tasmania. He's saying, oh, the University of Tasmania is down here, should come down here. And um, yeah, I've often said to him that I think about it. My wife, she is a lot more keen to do it. I find it really hard to decide on one particular region saying this one is going to be safe and we're just going to lock this one in. I, I don't think there will be any safe places. I'm, the, the impacts are going to be big. So my approach is to be as mobile, as flexible as possible to be able to adapt to whatever is going to happen. My children are bilingual and we're working on a third language. Both children have three passports and they actually have the freedom to be able to study and work either in the European Union or in Canada or in Australia. After scoping New Zealand and Tasmania, Professor Griggs has settled on his native England as a climate change retreat. Well, London's over here on the, on the right hand side, so we're down here in the southwest with Devon and Cornwall. So this is the house, just a traditional old English farmhouse built around about 1800. That's, that's my vegetable patch, so that's where I can, can grow my own food. I've certainly taken a look at this and looked at the climate projections and said, yeah, that's, that's going to be good for, you know, for the next sort of 100 years or so. When you know, some new fact comes in that makes me fearful, I think, well, at least you know, I've done what I can to protect my family. I can't protect them from changes in the global economy. I can't protect them from you know, mass migrations. I can't protect them from you know, some of the impacts that they're going to do, no matter where I move to, no matter where I buy my house. But I can do what I can.